I'm gonna get ya. <laughs> I'm gonna get ya. Just kidding, of course. My name's Drew Monson, and I couldn't get ya even if I tried. The reason is you've always had incredible reflexes. You've long wished someone would pick up on that, but nobody ever do. Sometimes you'll almost drop your phone on the sidewalk, and then you'll snatch it up real quick with the other hand, like some kind of military personnel. You're a freak, and I love you. You're handsome, and you're important. I gotta... I, I'll be right back. I'm nervous. Okay, hi. Um, I hope you still like me. I have a lot to talk about today. How are you? Seriously, how are you? Tell me. Like, I don't care if you're alone right now. Speak out loud with your mouth. We don't know exactly how the universe works yet. Maybe I'll hear you. How are you? Just okay? Why? They're gonna text you back, I promise. Can you be patient? Like, one time. Is that possible at all? They're just scared in a way that you aren't ready to comprehend yet. If you've never been here before, this is my second channel. Uh, I basically let myself speak, and you can't get mad if it's boring, because that's the deal, honey bunny. If you don't know who I am, I'm Drew Monson. I'm a YouTube celebrity of sorts. I've been famous on YouTube since I was literally a child. I was a part of a pretty popular family vlogging channel. I played the baby and then had myself emancipated when I turned nine and moved to glorious Miami, Florida. <laughs> just kidding. It is really hot outside. It's like, it's like 110. And I'm just saying that because if you see me sweating, don't worry. I'm just sweating. Every time there's even the smallest dab of moisture on my face, the comments pop out. Greasy boy. He's the greasy boy. He's the greasy boy. And who cares? Maybe I am. Honestly, guys with long greasy hair are like smart. Am I wrong? Like they do well on the SATs. I'll be right back. I literally just turned the camera off because I felt a burp rising up slowly. You know, I feel like I can feel them like two and a half minutes before sometimes. I'm like, he's at, he's at my legs. He's coming. But in my head, I was like, no, I can't be greasy and burping. Like at a certain point, you're gonna unsubscribe. But maybe I should just take it all the way. Like just, just go full gamer and like make a Discord account, get one of those blue bottles of Mountain Dew. I don't know why I make fun of gamers, by the way, when like everything about me is a gamer. Like my hair goes to here. Is that a gamer thing? But like besides gaming, I am gamer. I just don't game. The first thing I wanted to talk about today though, Taco Bell, it sounded like I said Taco Bell. The first thing you get at Taco Bell is chips and cheese. By the way, Taco Bell tip, not even close to being sponsored. If you get tacos, like at Taco Bell, get chips and cheese. You don't need all that cheese for the chips. Dip the tacos in the cheese. You'll have a good time, Dad. I know I've talked about this same thing like in various different ways over the years and some people are annoyed with it. You skip ahead, it won't be too long, but I swear this is a good one. And I will never stop being fascinated, scared, and amused when people get mad at me on the internet. Because number one, I feel like I don't deserve it. Like, we've all made mistakes, I definitely have, but I feel like for the most part, I'm on the internet like goofing around and, and dancing. Like I'm literally shaking my shoulders and saying he he he. And because of what I'm about to tell you about, somebody told me they were gonna K me the other day. Like the method, I'm not, I'm not talking kiss by the way. They told me the method, the materials that they would use to K me. And I reported their account, yes I did. Cause I believe in justice and I'll never see it. By the way, I did go to the account and it's like, it's a kid. It's a K, a K wants to K me. Okay, honestly, if the K is watching this right now, go ahead, try and K me, try and get me. You're gonna get me, you're gonna get me. Anyway, I, my name is Drew Monson and I made an Instagram reel. That's where this story starts. And I say that like a confession because it feels like one. I don't like Instagram reels, but let me say, it kinda works. I've been afraid of like the short form content algorithm, but I used to have, this is another confession. At my peak on Instagram, I had like over 900,000 uh, followers. And like, of course I felt beautiful, you know? Like, I mean, not that I was like an Instagram model or something. I think especially at that time, most of my Instagram was like these disgustingly like grotesque videos of me with like toothpaste on my face, pointing to my bare stomach, saying something like, that's the belly, and uh, that's the belly, and uh, that's the belly, just over and over again. And yeah, I had an Italian American accent when I was 22. Things were different. I would do, show me the meatball Mondays, one like equals one respect. I still feel like I don't know for sure if I'm attractive or not. You ever feel like that? Like you can't fully get a read on the situation? I'm gonna, I want someone to just like break my heart. Just tell me. 
The next time I'm hanging out with like more than two friends, I'm gonna I'm gonna go sneaky with it. I'm gonna like bring up the subject. Hey, you ever think about how some people are attractive and some people are unattractive? Anyway, I'm gonna go home. Walk away, close the door. Don't actually leave. Ear up to the wood. Listen to see if one of them's like, which one do you think Drew is? Anyway, what I was saying, <laughs> my follower count has been steadily declining for like five years, but baby, when I made like three reels, this is the first gains I've made in a long time. It's been like a decade. I had stalled out. It works. All you have to do is like debase yourself and become part of that like depressing mosaic. You know when you open Instagram, <laughs> like the little magnifying glass, and it's just all those pictures kind of moving and they're begging, like, pick me, pick me. It's almost like the paintings in Harry Potter where they're like, hello, but instead of like witches and wizards or whatever, it's people being like, five things narcissists do. Do you remember this commercial? Here's an interview with Paul McCartney. And then there's me like, la 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 la, la la Okay, that time I turned off the camera because I was so disappointed in myself for the example of la 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 la. What am I doing? I much prefer ta 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 anyway. That just feels better on the mouth. You know how some words just feel good on your mouth? I like da, do, di, ta, ta, ta. Like that's a nice spoonful of mac and cheese. It's like a little bit of craft. Do you know what I mean? I actually used to live with a dog named Lala. I said that like the dog was my roommate. Or it was just my stepmom's dog, so like I didn't see it as my dog. I used to live with this dog, Lala. It was like a Craigslist thing. Like she was so weird. I swear I didn't even see her. Like she would just be in her room. I don't think she had friends. She never did the dishes. No, but Lala was so- I seriously lived with this dog. It was like this big. It was one of those like genetically modified dogs that's like supposed to be cute and fit in your purse, but like its eyes bulging out and its legs don't work. I know that's sad, but it always looked scared and like I resented it because of that because like that made me feel scary. Like it always looked at me like I had just said, I'm gonna get ya, but I hadn't even, I'm gonna get ya to him, her. Rest in peace, Lala. I should have said that before, Lala did die, but she did ruin my carpet. I had nothing to do with it, by the way. Non-suspicious circumstances. Anyway, <laughs> what if Lala was channeling me in that moment? Like, I was telling a boring story about my Instagram reels, and she just started going, Lala, 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 remember me? Worship Lala, worship Lala. By the way, before I get into mine specifically, Instagram reels are like the worst, right? I prefer Instagram reels to be like, vertical clips of TV shows I've seen already. There's something pleasing about that, but the second that it's like mine, somebody being like, I've got something to say, I'm immediately like, shut up, why are you wearing that? They're always wearing like clothes that are a little bit annoying. Even any short form thing, like even if it's funny, it's kind of like when someone you're mad at is making you laugh and it's like, stop, stop, seriously, I don't want to right now. No, I'm in a bad mood. Like that's how I feel about any TikTok. Okay, this is my reel. It's me wearing this very hat, actually, and it says teenagers in 2003, and then I run up, full body shot, and I say, Hey mom, hey, mom. some friends are gonna head out to the mall. Could you spot me like 10 for a milkshake? Which, by the way, my first mistake, that's a very inaccurate milkshake price, even for 2023. I feel like there's still like seven or eight dollars. I was actually gonna say five dollar milkshake, but I thought it would be distracting and seem like a Pulp Fiction reference. Have you seen that movie? There's a scene where John Travolta goes, five dollar milkshake. And it always struck me that it sounds like he's saying five dollar milkshake. And I kind of like the way he said it, kind of don't like the way he said it. If you haven't seen that scene, look it up on YouTube. And then it could actually be like a game where like if you look up that scene on YouTube and you can be like, who's, who's here from Drew Monson, and I can be like, hey y'all, and it can be like a place that we all hang out on on Fridays, the comment section of that scene from Pulp Fiction on YouTube. Nobody likes that idea? Okay, I'll be there by myself. That's fine. Am I ugly? Anyway, then it goes to me saying, teenagers in 2023, and it says, some friends are gonna head down to the mall. We're doing a protest because they're gatekeeping oat milk. Can you cash at me $10,000? I'm disassociating. Which number one, the joke is supposed to be, uh, like there's two layers to the joke. The joke is number one supposed to just be absurd. It seems like it's gonna be about like inflation. I'm like $10 and you think it's gonna be like $50,000. Dang, Starbucks is expensive. But then it's just, 
A lot of my humor and what I think is funny is about like word choices. If you go back in this video, the word choices that I pick are very intentional. I've been thinking about them all day. I've been eating potatoes and just stewing, thinking about the fact that I just said stewing. That's all potatoes, honey. I literally just had shredded potatoes from Walmart. They weren't that good. Anyway, um, the second part of the joke is supposed to be like making fun of the idea of making fun of Gen Z because it's so kind of absurd and it's supposed to be like an impression of a bad TV show to hopefully point out that it's just so overboard and unrealistic and we don't actually, or I don't know if I should say we, but like understand what these kids are going through. Even though I myself have a lot of times where like I get grumpy and I see someone from Gen Z like walking around with their 90s clothes and I'm like do you even listen to Nirvana do you even know who that is his name's Kirk Coase like shut up don't be fake have you even heard the full MTV unplugged sessions on vinyl the only way to listen instead of being like hmm maybe it's a cry for help that all these children want to dress up as Kurt Cobain the man who K'd himself and again I ain't talking kissed himself do you think that Kurt Cobain ever kissed himself in the mirror? I would if I were him. I do, and I'm Drew Monson. <laughs> I mean, that's a different story. This guy's got long, greasy hair in the best way possible. I feel like Kurt Cobain wouldn't want to be referred to as Kurt Cobain, the man who K'd himself. That being said, he's dead. He doesn't get to choose anymore. He's like Lala. I refer to Lala as the messed up tiny dog who couldn't walk, and Kurt Cobain, Kurt Cobain ruined my carpet too when you think about it. Because when I heard Smells Like Teen Spirit, I started stomping around too hard on my boots. I frayed mother's rug. Anyway, what I was going to say is that I feel like it is your job as an aging person, like into your late 20s, 30s, to, it is your job socially, culturally, to not get too mad and grumpy publicly and annoyed and not send your love to the generation under you who are developing. You're not gonna do it, you're gonna get mad. I do, it's very hard. Social media makes it really hard. Like we're living in unprecedented times where you are watching kids go through like identity crises on a very public forum all the time on an algorithm that sends the most controversial pieces of anything to the top, the most cringe variation of that. And it like, leaves it on your doorstep, like, take a look. And at that point, it's time to do your job. And like, cause like, I didn't, I was on like MySpace and these websites that like barely exist anymore. And you can like seek them out. And it's kind of like, we don't talk about that. I know someone's made this point before, but like we got to do it in a little more secret than the kids now. The kids now, you make like one wrong step and you're like viral on Twitter. It's like, this kid was cringy. Let's find his mother. <laughs> We need to talk to her! Or something. I don't know. That seems like it would be nicer than the things people do to kids these days. What am I talking about? Kurt Cobain? I need some guidance. Anyway, I'm gonna read some of the funny comments that I got. Oh, what I was going to say, though, is that I... <sighs> I think I really do play with fire sometimes. Because I totally, and I've made this point before, You, if you're gonna do, like, sat... <clears throat> I'm so sorry. If you're gonna do satire on the internet, you can't expect everyone else to be on the same level as you. And if that's the game that you wanna play, and it's the game that I wanna play sometimes, you have to expect that people are going to be like watching 10 sincere things, and especially on like a short form thing where it's just slide, 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 next one, next one, next one. They're gonna be seeing people being sincere and people sounding almost like me, but serious. And then all of a sudden it's me and I'm like, Everyone's like, why don't you get that Drew's joking? It's like, well, how are you supposed- you don't know Drew! It's like when I try to make a joke to somebody I barely know. And they're like, that's not funny. Why are you bringing up the fact that your dog Lala died? That's not- I heard that wasn't even your dog. I'm like, shut up. I barely know you. They're like, exactly. Sorry, I feel like I'm not making my point well. I think what I'm trying to say is like, while I found the extent of the anger that these teenagers had towards me about this Instagram reel and the tone that they were taking with me, internet celebrity Drew Monson, to be a little ridiculous, but also funny, except for the guy who told me the specific way in which he was going to hurt me, which by the way, if you're gonna hurt me, don't do it in a specific way. Do it in a generalized way. 
Like, hurt me and the people around me. No, that's a horrible thing to put into the universe. Which, by the way, total tangent. When people say, wait, don't say that. Don't put that into the universe. Why would that be the universe's rule? Ooh, you said it. I'm gonna do it now. Like, the universe is like this big cloud that goes around with its ears. Like, who's saying something evil? Ooh, I'm gonna enact that. Yeah, right. The universe is not that rude. Anyway, while I found the comments a little bit ridiculous, I also under- By the way, I knew that they were teenagers. I don't know if you've ever had a moment like this before, but I would like- I was reading- I read like everything that people send. If you send me like anything, I saw it. I saw it. Sorry I didn't respond, but I saw it. And some of them it was like, ow. Like I feel- like I felt that in my sternum. Like, ooh. And I'd go, who said that? Like, I want to see it. Like, show me your face, huh? Let's see, let's see how cool you are. Do you skateboard? Like, what's up? And I'd click it and it would literally be like a picture of them dissecting a frog in biology class. Like, the bio is 14, he, him, lover of pop punk. And I'm like, what am, like, I need to go outside. Like, I've reached the end of the internet sidewalk. Like, I gotta find something to do outdoors right now. Like, the alarm is ringing. But I also, oh, there's a tiny little, do you ever have like flies buzzing around your head and you kind of look around like, are other people having flies? Like, is it the dried sweat? Like, is there something about me? I understand why someone in that age group right now would be like so on edge. Because like I said, I see kids taking like social media beatings for being like considerably less dumb than I was when I was 14 he him, lover of all things pop punk. Like for making a not nuanced enough opinion about Taylor Swift that doesn't take into consideration, you know, every page of the communist manifesto. I literally decided I was gonna try and reference the communist manifesto before I turned on the camera again, and I googled it first to make sure that was like a real thing, and it wasn't, I was like, that's a book, right? Like, it's not, you know, an Adam Sandler movie. It's not a movie starring Thomas Cruising. Okay, I had to edit again right there because honestly, I started saying something that could get me K'd, and we don't want that. If when Drew Monson's dead, it ain't no it ain't no more Drew Monson number two. We're talking Drew Monson minus six, as in six feet underground. Still vlogging, you know he will be. You know that my last words are gonna be, hey guys. <laughs> oh, whatever. Whatever. Not everything I say is gonna be genius. Literally, like I'm just I'm literally some guy wearing SpongeBob shorts that my dad got me for my birthday. Like, these look like a swimsuit, and they're not. Do you have any clothes like that? Okay, here are some of the funny comments I got from angry teenagers. <laughs> Dog, you're 35, go to work. Which, to this one, first of all, I'm 28, and you have no idea what I've been through. By the way, I'm losing my voice because I've been like, I talk a little bit too loud, right? Like, I could turn the volume down on me as a human. Uh, at your grown age. Dot, dot, dot. That one, very, I like that one because it's succinct. Like, at your, like, four words, you said a lot. Four words, by the way, four likes. Um, someone said t taw. Hmm, I like that one. I should have liked that one. Bro, millennials are so hateful for no reason. They are turning into boomers with the level of just spite in their soul. Did that guy put a hex on me? <laughs> that felt insane. I mean, honestly, that person took the video the wrong way, but I can't argue. Like, I do, <laughs> when my back hurts the most that it can, and I'm like, haven't eaten for a few hours, I do start turning into a boomer with a level of spite in my soul. Like, that happens at least three times a day. But that, like, I feel kind of bad. Like, I, I am prone to, like, excessive guilt, so I never know when I'm getting, like, too overboard with feeling bad about something. But, like, I don't want to make something that's not clear enough that it's not, like, hurting younger people and, like, making them feel like the world hates them. But maybe it actually makes them feel good to get their anger out and, like, unite against me. Maybe I should just go lay down in a playground <laughs> and let a bunch of kids beat me up at this point. Okay, um, I don't really like that I said that, but I'm not gonna cut it out because sometimes we just say the wrong thing. This is, by the way, the person who said, dog, you're 35, go to work, this is my job. Like, if you only knew <laughs> that me just like 
prancing around my living room. It's all part of, like, you're working for me, by the way. My job is to get your attention, no matter how. Somebody commented, bro, you never met a kid in 2023. I kind of like that as an insult. Bro, you never, by the way, I did. I met a little kid the other day. I was walking my friend's dog and there was a little kid across the street and he was eating spaghetti and meatballs out of a little Tupperware, which is crazy because I eat all of my food out of a Tupperware because when I cook, and I had just cooked myself spaghetti and meatballs. They were impossible meatballs, which I think are better than beyond meatballs, but that's besides the point. It did kind of feel like he was a miniature version of me and I was walking my friend's dog because my mom and I are dog sitting for our friend's dog and uh, the kid was like talking to me and he was like you ever go to that park and it's a park that I've been to a lot I was like I and he was like so small he had to be like three to four years old maybe I don't maybe five and I go yeah I used to go to that park all the time when I was a kid and he goes me too I used to go there when I was one and I was like he doesn't know he's a kid I kind of wanted to tell him and be like by the way, you are a kid, and then run away with the dog, and he'd be like, are you serious? Because I could tell, like, he didn't know. Like, hey, brother, you're a little kid. Anyway, this person says you never met a kid in 2023. I did, yesterday, with a dog on my arm. Grown man in 2003, I'm going to work. Grown man in 2023, I'm going to make fun about teenagers on the internet. And little do they know, he made an entire vlog defending them <laughs> and showing his true soul. Do I seem like I'm just, I feel like sometimes my videos are just like me as a lawyer making the case for me being like a good person, but also like very sort of strategically commenting on the ways in which I'm not and trying to make up like a self-aware good person who like knows that they have flaws. Don't, don't tell me if you agree with that. That's just one of my insecurities. Somebody has a Peter Griffin profile and says, wait, this is so, I feel like this is getting boring. Let me find something interesting to talk about. But somebody, I just wanna say thank you to the guy whose picture is Peter Griffin. Thanks for reaching out. By the way, on that same topic, um, not the topic of Peter Griffin, we don't talk about Pete. I will say though, total sidebar, Peter Griffin, I feel like the joke of Family Guy is like, he's lazy, he's stupid, he's a bad husband, all he does is go to the bar. But when you really think about it, he's funny and interesting. Like all the things that he says, the things that he does, he has a full life. Like I wouldn't mind sitting down with him and picking his brain. He's always telling a story. He's like, hey, this reminds me of the time that I, like I don't know anybody who tells more anecdotes than Peter. I mean, I imagine if you hang out with him in real life when he goes, this is like the time that I, it doesn't actually play the clip that they show you on the show, but I bet you he paints a picture. Not to mention he's well-traveled. Think of all the places that Peter's gone. What I was going to say though, is that I was laying in bed the other night, no big deal, wearing my SpongeBob shorts, soft white tank top, twiddling my toes. By the way, I thought of a really good name for like my YouTube viewers, like Taylor Swift has Swifties. Okay, if you don't know, my other channel has always been called My Toe Cold. I changed it to like Drew Monson, My Toe Cold in parentheses, but that's my original YouTuber name, My Toe Cold. So I thought the people who watch me, they're in the My Toe Cult. Isn't that kind of good? Like, I shouldn't say that. I feel like that's like bad PR to say that like your viewers on YouTube are your cult. I've always said that there's like a thin line. Like you have, cause I've seen like YouTubers or like celebrities where I go to like their Instagram live and I'm like, you're running a cult. Like you don't realize it, but this is a cult. Like there is no difference if we look at the definition here. That being said, my toe cult is fun. Anyway, I was in bed and I literally was like refreshing my notifications over and over again. Cause I get scared when the clock strikes midnight and repetitive motions with my fingers help me. And there were these two like, Younger people, like if you go viral enough, people will just start fighting. <laughs> like it happens like underneath and it's, it's weird cause it almost feels like you're like the mayor and these are like townspeople like arguing in the street. And I could jump in there and be like, hey, break it up. And they'd be like, uh oh, the boss says to stop. You know, I don't think they actually would listen to me but they were clearly like young and they were going, you know when an internet fight gets to the point where one of the people goes, that's not actually what I said. Like, you know it's, it's getting juicy when one of them starts quoting themselves from three replies ago. Actually, if you look back, actually, if you look back at my original, 
at my original comment, when someone says my original comment, things are happening. But I literally had this moment where I, I like looked at one of, the, I was like, this literally is a kid. I'm laying in bed right now watching two kids art. Like this might as well be their iMessage thread. What am I doing? And also, can you guys do your homework? Like, can you do your homework? I literally wanted to message one of their moms like, hey Judy, I don't know, <laughs> what are Gen Z's parents named? Hey Sarah. Little Peter, what a bad example. I literally was just, what if Peter Griffin was a kid? Anyway, what was I saying? One second. By the way, um, can we play a game? I want to, I just want to try something out here. It'll only take like a couple minutes, I think. And maybe you've played this before. It's kind of like something that you do. I know this sounds boring, but I swear it's fun. I did it with my friends the other day and it blew their minds. It's like an algebra type, like a game, like a, like a cool, like, hey, math can be cool, but check this out. Okay. You have to like follow along with me, get like a piece of paper out if you need it. I know when people say get a piece of paper out now, I'm like, what do you mean? It ain't the 90s. I got a phone and there's a notes app. Okay, start by thinking of a number. Any number, any number. Don't go too big, unless you have a calculator. Start by thinking of a number, you got it? Now multiply that number by, by nine. Multiply your number by nine. Got it, I'll give you a second, okay? If the result is a multi-digit number, add, those di add its digits together to come up with a new number. If that new number is still a multi-digit number, add its digits together to come up with yet another new number. Continue doing this until you end up with a one-digit number. I feel like I'll give you like 10 seconds for that because that's a little confusing, but I know you're, I have a feeling that you're like, Drew, I get it, I get it, okay? Once you have a one, you can pause, but once you have a one, you're allowed, a one-digit number, subtract five from that number, subtract five from it. Okay, now using the standard numbering of the English alphabet, where one is A, two is B, and so on, find the letter corresponding to your number. So one A, two B, three C. What's the letter for your number? Got it? Okay. Next, think of a European country that begins with that letter. Thinking, thinking, you got it quick. Then take the last letter of that country, okay, last letter, and think of an animal that begins with that letter. Got it? Finally, take the last letter of, the, it's almost over, the last letter of that animal and think of a color that begins with that letter, the last letter of the animal. Color, got it? Rewind if you have to. Okay, now, oh, wait a minute. You do know there aren't any orange kangaroos in Denmark, right? If I was right, you're freaking out. Was I right? Because I think somebody did this to me once and it's weird to like read somebody's mind, right? You're either like going crazy <laughs> or I just realized half of you probably didn't even do it. You're like, what? What is he doing? Is he, he's doing math, really? Can you change it? You're sitting there with your boyfriend. Your boyfriend's like, I don't know, hon. I'm gaming on my Switch. I told you to get rid of the Switch. You can't control me, that's not a boundary. Anyway. <laughs> That game, by the way, it were, if it worked, it's because of the number nine. You should look up the magic of the number nine on the internet. It's very fascinating to me. Cause you know how you can do the finger trick where like nine times two, put your two down, one, 18. Nine times three, two, seven. You see what I'm doing? Four, three, seven. Like, no, three, six, five, four, five. Do you see what I'm doing? It's crazy. When I was a lot more obsessed and compulsive, I actually got really obsessed with the number nine. And every time I would look at the clock or like what time it was, I would add all of the digits together. And if it was an even number, I thought something bad was going to happen. If it was an odd number, I thought it was good. And if it was nine, that specific odd number, I was like, now we're talking. Like I was like, I'm going to live forever. I don't know. Something about nine. Think about like the address of where you live, add all the digits together. If it equals nine, you're gonna have a good life. Everybody else, sorry, there's a storm coming. I just scared like 1500 people and that's not what I wanted. Also the other day, I don't mean to talk trash. I guess I kind of do sometimes. And I don't even know if this is talking trash, but I was making a mistake, AKA watching YouTube shorts I don't know why I go against short form. Some of, sometimes it's fun. Sometimes it's good to just focus on a bunch of little treats. But it was one of YouTubers interviewing uh, Mr. Beast, which by the way, I'm not saying 
that interviewing Mr. Beast is kind of like interviewing Donald Trump. Not, not exactly the same, but I would say if what Donald Trump is to like, you know, democracy and human rights, Mr. Beast is to like the future of creativity and like artistic integrity. You know, it's not the same at all. It's not as big of a, a it's not as serious. But at the same, I saw these YouTubers, they were like talking about Mr. Beast and they were calling him Jimmy. They go, uh, you know, Jim, I'm like, Jimmy? Your first name basising Mr. Beast? I'm side-eyeing you for the rest of your life. What's happening? But it was this video, I can't lie. I'm, if you don't know who Mr. Beast is, he's like the most famous YouTuber, but nobody has actually seen his videos unless they're nine years old. It came up again because life is, I did that on purpose. <laughs> I act like it, whoa. But anyway, Mr. Beast, he was like talking about how famous he is. If you don't know who he is, he's the most famous person in the world. Again, no one's actually watched the videos. And if they did, they just went, what? By the way, I don't trust, if you watch a Mr. Beast video and don't go, that's weird. I don't trust you. Like, the, I'll see people online who are like, what's the problem? I can't even begin. It's not, I wouldn't even call it a problem. But like, if you watch that and don't go, ooh. Like, I can't, I don't even know where to start with you. You know what I mean? It's, I don't even know if I'd call it cringe. It's just like, he was talking about how famous he was though, and he goes, I can't even go to Walmart without people following me to my car. And then he goes, I swear, he said it like he was bragging, but I swear it was very sad. He goes, I don't even like to leave the house anymore. Honestly, I don't feel comfortable leaving the house. And I was like, Bro, what are you doing? Like, what is the goal here? I know you can't take it back at this point, but and then I was like, well, I guess he could just build an island and live there. I'm about to burp. I have GERD, G-E-R-D, all caps. Look it up. Millions of Americans suffer from it and none of us are okay. But what I was going to say, I just, I can't imagine any amount of money that I could have that would set me for a million lifetimes where I would want to live the life in exchange to where people who watch Mr. Beast videos are walking up to me at Walmart. I would just hate that. And I like to believe that the, anyone who's ever walked up to me at Walmart, which hey, not to Mr. Beast myself, but it's happened. The other day I literally was getting carrots for my turtle and this girl, I, she acted like I was Cody Simpson. Like she, she was like, ah! Like she literally did a little scream. I don't think I've ever, I haven't had someone do a little scream at me since like 2014 VidCon. I was like, okay, like I wanted her to hang out with me. Like I was like, can you follow me around the store? Like, let's keep this going. It was fun. And the turtle loved the carrots too. <laughs> what was I saying? I mean, listen, I'll give it to him. At the same time, has Mr. Beast technically, like numerically speaking, cured more people's blindness than I have? I would, yeah, I think he did like a thousand. I'm at like 722, you know, we're close. I wonder if I've ever cured somebody's blindness. Just as far as like somebody watched my videos and it gave them inspiration. It made them feel like they could be their silly self. And then they were able to like go to the doctor after years of not going to the doctor. And the doctor was like, actually, we can like take care of your blindness now. Like you have a specific type that we can do an operation on. And they were like, thanks, Drew Monson. And the doctor's like, who? I unfollowed him. <laughs> anyway, what were we talking about? Okay, I really, by the way, I know I'm edited. I try to make these videos like unedited, but I have been so like, my obsessive compulsive type of stuff. I actually was going to tell a story about that. So I, I've developed this new obsessive compulsive thing. <sighs> Great, the alarm. You know when your alarm goes off and it's like, yeah, I'm already awake. And you realize how like low, <sighs> how lowly you regard yourself, would that be the way to put it? Like, really? I thought that I wasn't going to wake up until 11.50? I thought I needed to like, make a loud noise play at 11.50 a.m.? I've been do, I've, I already took a walk, sweetheart. Anyway, I've got this new thing where like, I've decided, I think it was because I started getting scared that everybody in my life was going to die when my grandma died, and I was afraid that I was gonna die all the time during COVID that every time I'm on the phone with my family especially, I have to say 
in my head. I have to say I love you, but not just I love you. That has to be the last words that, and also in person. When I see like a close friend or a family member, it has to be, and it sucks because like sometimes you go like, love you, and then someone goes, love you too. Oh, by the way, and then I'm like, oh, because then I have to say it again. For some reason, it has to be the last word said. And I kind of don't like it if I have to have them say it first. I don't like it if they're saying the last. Anyway, it's gotten weird though because I kind of now don't like it not being the last thing I say to anybody and I'm kind of trying to decide because I think it, I think it's all about myself like I'm just it makes me uncomfortable so I'll be on the phone with somebody I'm like I actually we're just acquaintances so I'll sort of say it quietly <laughs> like I'll be on the phone with somebody who's like a friend we like joke around but don't get into deep stuff talk for like you know a half an hour every three months and they'll be like okay bye well I gotta do my laundry and I'm like okay bye love you like really quickly <laughs> and I was at this is not even a joke I was at 7-eleven the other day buying like you know one of those three packs of allergy pills or whatever and the and I wasn't even thinking about it. I'm so used to doing this now. The guy was like, uh, you know, we checked out. Oh, two fifteen, whatever. I give him my debit, uh, Apple Pay. <laughs> and he goes, okay, have a good one. And I go, love you. Like I swear, I said it. Maybe I should end. And that's what sucks is you're not supposed to tell your YouTube viewers, the my toe cult, that you love them. It's toxic. So now I'm gonna have a bad, li this is all about I'm going to have a bad life. So maybe it isn't. Cause everything with OCD is like about yourself, right? No, I guess sometimes people are like, my mom's gonna die if I, but for me, it's kinda like my mom's gonna die, but mostly I'm gonna die, buddy. Did I literally, I didn't even mean to do, let me put that. <laughs> okay. I, I wrote down, just give me one second, I'm gonna look at my phone. By the way, do you ever change your lock screen? And you're, you're like, I need people to see this. Like, how do I make, I want, I'll change my lock screen sometimes and I'm like, who's, cause did you ever like, I don't know, get a new phone case or like change something and you're like, you, you in that moment you realize, I don't have enough friends. Cause like no, but then also like, why am I doing, why am all of my consumer purchases or like a lot of the things that I'm like, this makes me, me actually just, in hopes that someone will go, hey, you're cool. Like, it has to be about more than that, right? But anyway, I just like the way that this picture looks. If you know who that guy is, by the way, I'll cure your blindness. I'll give you $100, no I won't. Um, one second. It was my grandma's um, memorial the other day, which we did like almost two months after she passed away. Um, so it wasn't honestly that emotional because I feel like I've pr I did so much crying about my grandma passing away that I felt kind of cried out and it was just like a nice little gathering. <laughs> but it was funny. I just wanted to tell this story because I thought it was sort of sweet. Because there was, you know, a lot of, my grandma was 93 when she died. So there was a lot of older people that she knew. And one of them came up to me and he goes, hey, your grandma told me that you write scripts for television. And I was like, hmm. I was like trying to like elderly person translate. I think that means make YouTube videos. And I, for a second I was like, do I write script? Wait a second. But I was like, oh, uh, YouTube? I do YouTube. He goes, YouTube? Is that on the television? And I was like, no, like I didn't, I felt I could have said, well, if you have a smart TV, but I didn't want to get into the smart TV discussion with him. Well, if you got a 55 inch uh, Samsung, no. So he, he, I was like, uh, well, it's YouTube. He goes, is that a television? I go, uh, no, it's like on the internet. He goes, so computers? And I was like, yeah, computers. Like we're going all the way back to computers. And he goes, so I can type in Frank Sinatra on YouTube and see videos of Frank Sinatra? And I was like, Honey, you can type in Frank Sinatra. You can type in Dolly Parton. They got everybody. They're dancing around and singing for you. I literally wanted to blow his mind and be like, they've got an app, honey. You know he doesn't have a smartphone. Because you know how sometimes people are like, I wish that I could go back to the 70s and show them an iPhone. Do you ever think about that? Like, when, that, I would just love to see like the Beatles, the Beatles faces and be like, this is my iPhone. They go, what the mate? What the mate is that? But you could basically have the same experience with this old man I met at my grandma's memorial. Like, I honestly think if I whipped out my iPhone, he'd be like, what in the heavens? Like, it's the same thing. I shouldn't be making fun of old people. But hey, Mr. Beast is young. Um... Speaking of 7-Eleven, by the way, I was in a Greyhound bus the other day, and I had one of those bus drivers who was like, 
I need to, you know when you're like, you go, I don't know, it could be a doctor's office, you just meet somebody who like has such a chip on their shoulder and starts with so much aggression, it's like, let me tell you the rules! I was like, oh my god, it doesn't need to be like this. And we were like, taking a two hour trip on the, on the, if you don't know what a Greyhound bus is, it goes long distances, you pay like, you know, 20 bucks, 50 bucks, and she goes, okay, in 30 minutes we will be stopping for 10 minutes, there is a 7-Eleven, you can get snacks or water if you get alcohol even if you drink it outside and I smell it on you walking onto the bus you will have to exit the bus and then she goes I don't care if we're on the freeway I will drop you on the side of the free I was like excuse me number one I need the store what happened <laughs> like I need you to tell me what happened last year because that sounds like a story it sounds like a Peter Griffin that's my new term for when a story is really good. Number two, you can't do that. Come on. Come on, at least drop him off at another 7-Eleven so he can top himself off. Hey, I'd be the coolest bus driver ever. I'm like, 7-Eleven, and you can get anything you want. Wink. We're, next, we're stopping at the smoke shop. Let's go crazy. Welcome to the party bus. Maybe I could, by the way, I am, if you don't know this about me, Drew Monson facts, Drew Monson lore, I don't have my license. And this is the first year, I'm 28 years old, that I've been like, maybe I should get my license. Because I went um, to the lake the other day with my friend, and she drove us, and it was just like straight. There was no turn, it was just like a, a highway the whole time. And I was like, I like going to the lake. And I want to go to the, because I have to like ride the bus and like figure out. And I don't want, because I kind of like the eco-friendly vibe. But also, how much does it cost to have a car? Serious question, how much do you like pay for that? Because I, I don't, I know there's like five different, like, this is my insurance, this is the note, this is the blah blah. Does it act, does it cost that? Ah, it's so stupid, never mind. But I do, I went on a hike the other day. It was like a 20 minute hike. Don't, because I know that's kind of annoying to hear about somebody. I don't know if you're like me, but whenever somebody talks about something more athletically hard than I'm able to do or do regularly, I'm like, shush, stop. Don't tell me that. Na 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 na. La 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 la. Ta 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 ta. Anyway. Am I being boring today? Be nice. Okay, I made a new list. I've done this before, but I'm always trying to figure out who you are, the person watching my videos. So sometimes I'll do a little list of things that I'm going to guess about you. And if you feel like it, you can tell me um, if they're true or not. And also tell me if the um, game worked, the math game worked. I wonder. If anybody actually, did you do it? If you did it, you're crazy. Okay, number one, these are things that I think about you. Number one, you love sugar. Your life is just one big, sh I actually wrote this like 30 minutes ago while I was taking, if you're wondering what my life is like, I write this down in my notes app. You love sugar, your life is just one big struggle and it's between you and sugar. Number two, you're not sure if you can love properly. It's really tough for you, especially lately. Number three, you don't know if you like horses a lot. You don't know if you like horses a lot or if you don't because they're scary to you. Number four, you feel the same way about me. <laughs> Number five, all of these things that I just said are actually about myself. Those are just things that I was thinking about me. I have, oh, sorry, I almost knocked you over. <laughs> Does this actually feel, ah! is that, oh no, my microphone, oh god. Second. By the way, do you know what Spirit Halloween is? If you live in like another country, maybe, but I feel like in America, it's like a big chain store for, it's like a Halloween shop and it pops up in every town. But I was, it's, I don't know if you're watching this in the future. If you are, how's it going? Not good? Tell me. Just okay? I, w I wish the future would be just okay. But you know that, you know what the future is going to do to us? It is gonna get us. The future is gonna get ya. That's scary. He's gonna get us. Do you think the future is a woman or a man? Anyway, the future is non-binary. And I ain't trying to be woke when I say that. It's just true. Sorry. What I was going to say though, is that it's like the middle of July for me. I don't know when you're watching this, but I was taking a walk, feeling pretty good actually. And I saw like a, a building that's normally empty and one of those big, like they put like a tarp up and it said, Spirit Halloween coming soon. And I had a moment where I was like, 
I officially don't have a concept of time anymore. And I don't know if that's true or Spirit Halloween is just so eager. Like they can't stop. They're like, I'm coming. Do you, has anyone else had this experience where Spirit Halloween is like, it's like a friend who's coming over and they update you too much on the traffic. 15 minutes. Okay, now it's actually 10. Looks like I'm actually going to be there more closer to one. For, okay, you know what? I'm going to take a nap. That's fine, Spirit Halloween. Make your store. I'll be over here. Okay, I'm going to look at some of my recent comments. I've done this before, uh, kind of when I run out of things to talk about. Because now if you comment on this video, maybe I'll read it in the next one. Uh, these are just the most recent comments I've had on my second channel. I have not seen these before. I'm saying it like I'm a magician. Just to be clear. Okay. You're cool and nasty. Both true. Drew, I'll be at your concert this Wednesday. Oh my god. I'm doing a concert um, very soon. I'm, I'm playing for 20 minutes and I'm so scared, maybe 25 minutes, I'm so scared. I honestly don't think I've practiced enough. And, but maybe I'll, I'm, I'm literally at the point where I'm like, I'm just gonna have to have a joke. Like I'm gonna have to turn it into a joke about like, hey, I'm gonna mess up. When I was thinking of, <clears throat> tell me if this is a good idea. What I was thinking of doing is like, and if I mess up, I'll dance. And that, no, that would ruin it. Cause I kinda, I feel like I'm a silly person and like I, I kind of want to be do you ever feel like you 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 overly act goofy because it's scarier for people to like take you seriously because it's like I get it like ha 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 I'm the joke I'm the joke of this friend group get it because I can't actually say it I can't actually say something <laughs> what <laughs> anyway what was I saying Okay, my boy, you make me laugh and remind me of my personality. Stop! I love you, Drew, and keep being you. Okay, Shelly, you just made my life a little bit better. Every question you asked, my boyfriend answered yes to. Don't tell me about your boyfriend. This isn't, this isn't that type of thing. Just kidding. Riley, I respect you and your love. No, I don't. Take his switch away. Very thankful for you and your videos. They help me so much with my depression. Okay, this is just people being really nice to me. Does that make you feel good? Pretend this is about you. Very thankful for you and your videos. They help me so much with my depression. I'm glad. Do you think that they really... Whenever somebody says that, though, there's a part of me that's like, okay, but if a YouTube video helped you with your depression, you have to acknowledge that, like, the path before you got to that YouTube video was you becoming open to, like, I really feel like I was maybe the straw that broke the camel's back. Like, I possibly, like, nudged, nudged you over the finish line, but you gotta give yourself a lot of credit. Like, if you're, I feel like it's almost a way to not give yourself, like, maybe I'm being corny. Sometimes I have trouble, like, saying exactly how I feel without sounding like a life coach and then I'm embarrassed, but... You, I feel like it could be a way to like not love ourselves as much as, as we should to be like, this album saved my life. You know what I mean? Like maybe, maybe I did most of the work and then I listened to an album, right? Did that help anybody? God, I hope it did. Should we play the numbers game again? I'm scared. This was delightful. Okay. Delightful is a good word, by the way. I feel like if somebody says the word delightful, they seem trustworthy. It's like, oh, you don't hurt anybody. Delightful. Okay, hello, sir. You're calling something- Sorry, were you just calling that uh, flower delightful? Can you come over here? I'd like to spend time with you. I'm a high- <laughs> Somebody commented, I'm a high school senior watching this. I can't get away from these kids! I was scared at first because I thought you were in my mind. <laughs> I was and I am and I ain't leaving. Does anyone ever have dreams about me? I was thinking about that the other day. Do you ever just like sit and go, I wonder if anybody's thinking about me right now? Because as any, are you a little bit famous? There's so many famous people now, you might be a little bit famous too. Because sometimes I start thinking that way and I'm like, oh, I wonder if any of my friends are thinking about me. And then I go, wait a second, I'm kind of famous. There could be like 12 people thinking about me right now. Because I get so upset. I get so obsessed with, like, there's always some famous, and usually, actually for me, the less famous somebody is, the more I'll become obsessed with them, because you can kind of, like, make your fantasy a little more realistic, right? Like, hey, maybe they would reply to my DM, I'm not gonna, tr but, like, I will get so, it, usually it's, like, a musician or, like, somebody who, like, stopped making YouTube videos seven or eight years ago, you know what I mean? And I will get, and I'm like, I wonder how many people are doing that with me right now. There's gotta at least be one. And I wish I could just shake them and be like, I'm not worth it, but also tell me more. Okay, any more comments? I'm almost done, I promise. Unless this is comforting to you in that, how many, would you watch this if, how long would you watch this for? Like, would you watch this for four hours? You wouldn't. 
You wouldn't, and that's that shows that you don't care about me. By the way, uh, excuse me. Oh, sorry, that's my 21-year-old adopted British son. I adopted him when he was 15 and I was 20. It was the closest age gap adoption ever performed. And if you ask us, life is a performance. That's right, Dad. Um, I know you haven't like been showing me a lot recently, but Daddy, what? I was wondering if I could, what? Do what I told, you wanna do the dance? I've been practicing all night, okay? Fine, my son wants to do a dance for you guys. Thank you, daddy. <laughs> all right, it's not perfect, but you know, it's who I am. I'm not perfect either, much like my father. Stop, it's not funny anymore. You know I struggle with perfection obsession. I'm the British boy and nothing gonna hurt. If something hurts me, I might just stop living. <laughs> my British son has depression too. That's what happens when I try to just come up with whatever's in my mind. Like, if something hurts me, I might just stop living. Like, I think that I'm joking around as my little British son, but that's kind of how I feel about life. If something hurts me, I might stop living. Don't worry, if you're my dad watching this, which my dad watches all my videos, I'm fine. There's no emergency. One time my dad called me like 12 times and then he was like, that's it, I'm coming over. And I was literally at the movies and I was like, is that really how, like, is that how unwell you think I am? You're not wrong in a sense, but also I'm at the movies. Literally the last text was, that's it, I'm coming over. Was that story funny? You know when a story isn't that funny so you just repeat the last part of it one more time? <laughs> Remember what I just said? Did it work this time? I love this video so much. Okay, nice. Hey Drew, RuPaul once played a drag queen named Rachel T Oh, okay, never mind. Somebody said that I stole a joke from RuPaul. You wanna fight me? Go ahead. I'm dead is absolutely, oh, they liked my album. I wanna find a kind of a mean one. Uh, oh, they, I saw you at Dave and Buster's last weekend. It was the first time I've ever felt starstruck. Drew, you are so adorable. Somebody, that's crazy actually, because I've always felt like if anyone's ever called me attractive on the internet, I'm like, just wait until you see every angle of my face. You know what I mean? Because you, we all know that we pick the pictures and even me setting this camera up, I'm like, let me put a little bit higher. Let's, because we don't want to see it over here and we don't want to show them the, you know, the pimple on, I have a pimple on, do you see this? There's a little pimple on my chin and it's prom tonight. But anyway, the fact, that, the fact that someone saw me in real life and they still think I'm adorable? Which, by the way, I'm not a child. How dare you? Just kidding. Okay, I think that's all. This was a weird video. I really have... I had potatoes again. By the way, um, about 20 minutes ago, uh, I, the video changed to a new... I made the first half of this... Could you tell? I made it yesterday. Like, the lighting changed a few times because I wanted to make a video so... Because I know that they're always... It always gets to a point if I keep going... Because I get... I don't want you to watch my videos and be like, he's over this. That's... I really don't... And I don't want to be over it either. But I push sometimes and I'm always having a little bit of fun. But sometimes I'm just having such a hard time not hating myself. I talk about this all the time. But I just can't let myself talk without going, start over. You're not good. You're not good. You suck. But if I push through, and I feel like I'm there right now, I get to a place where I actually feel like I'm talking to you, whoever you are, and I feel like I'm expressing myself, even if it's not perfect, and I feel like maybe I'm even only being funny every 90 seconds or whatever, or maybe I'm just like keeping somebody company, and like I feel good about it. And I don't know, I've been thinking about that recently because, you know, a lot of the stuff that you have to do, and I mean, not that I have to make video, I don't have to make videos in any consistent, way technically, but especially like chores or certain things like when you for I'm trying to become more comfortable with starting doing things when I don't want to do them. Because I know this is sort of like an obvious thing that people say, but like if you wait, I, I get so caught up in like, cause sometimes you do wait for like the perfect moment and you just go boom, boom, boom. Like I am in the mood now and it doesn't even take a little bit of effort. I'm just already in the flow state. Let's get it done. Oh my God, that was amazing. Like you put your headphones on, you clean the house, you're focused in on a podcast and it's just happening. But sometimes you have to start cleaning the house and the first, not even the first like two minutes of cleaning the house don't feel good. The first, cause I'll, I'll do this thing where I'm like, hey, maybe I'll just start and then I'll feel good. And then I start cleaning the house. I don't have a house by the way. <laughs> I start cleaning the, the one bedroom apartment 
with like a couple flies in here that, that are, again, making me feel smelly and nasty. I think I smell pretty good though. This is besides the point. But you know when you start doing something, you're like, maybe this will make me feel good, and then you only give yourself like five minutes, and you're like, it's not working. I've learned that when you go, ah, it's not working, you're actually just around the corner from it working. Like, it, hang in there. That's my advice. Like, if you say, I'm gonna take a walk, maybe it'll help me feel better, and you start taking the walk, and it's like, still nothing, I give up. Try, and it's, it's not easy, but try to push past that point where you're like, I guess nothing works, because a lot of times, I, when I, when it does actually work, I look back and I go, wow, 10 minutes ago, I was positive that this was something to give up on. Anyway, I'm gonna sing the names of the people um, that pay $30 a month on my Patreon over there. If you wanna watch, I'm gonna talk longer on my Patreon. I feel like I'm gonna talk about, like, my personal life. But for real, I don't know, maybe a little bit. I'm gonna talk about, like, love or something. Let's talk about love. By the way, keep in mind, I make the melodies of these up as I go along, so it won't be that good, but it will be good. Vincent Noah Mila Maria Maddie T Lynn's Lat Eden, hey, Ginny, oh ho ho, Christy Z, Cannibal Kira, Paige, Brandy, Nina, did I do Nina E already? If I did already, I'm sorry, some people get double, hey, 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 Brandy, he, Emily, hey, and Kayla, ho, Mexi binge, ha, 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 Chris Crosby, Joe Wilson, Jordan B, Isabel Morales, LP, and Eden B, he, and Pandora, Sarah Jane Pierce, Domla, Lucy, and Kenya, and Riley, Curiel, Kathy Gans. Say Chris Crosby. If I'm doubling two people, I'm sorry. Chris Crosby. Thank you. Peter Griffin out for real this time. Peter Griffin's going away. Peter Griffin isn't going to come back. Peter Griffin has changed his life. He's leaving your family. Peter Griffin's been a part of your family for a long time. It's almost like he was your uncle or your cousin. But Peter Griffin's gone. Peter Griffin is not you anymore. Why are you watching this? Seriously. <laughs> If you're still watching this right now, what, like, there's no other way to say it. You're either my dad or you're in love with me. Like, you need to face that. And if you're my dad and you still need to face that, honestly, I'm not surprised. Just kidding. Dad, if you see this, um, you're just a person. I'm coming to realize that. I'm kidding. My dad's fine. My mom, on the other hand, she's amazing. <laughs> Great, now my dad's jealous of my mom. What if I started acting like all of the Family Guy characters paid for my Patreon? Brian, Lois, and Meg, not to mention Stewie, Stewie, Stewie. I'm so annoying. I'm so annoying. What if I kept going for 20 minutes?